The i9-14900K is a CPU that out of the box has terrible efficiency and it's been configured to just throw power consumption completely out the window in favor of maximum performance. It's so bad to the point where I'm going to show you guys this side-by-side -side comparison right on your screen so you can see when you tune the i9-14900K, you can literally halve the power consumption in some instances and really not lose a whole lot of FPS. And the benefit of that is then lower temperatures. And of course, you're gonna be paying less money on your power bill when it comes to utilities every month. Though we'll get onto more of these discrepancies with the 4900K later, I think you guys have come here to see how does it compare when it's undervolted and tuned versus say the Ryzen 9 7950X, as well as AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which are actually AMD's best CPUs out there on the market at the moment, and they both come under the price of the Intel i9-14900K, which makes them very attractive already before this CPU was even released. But after today's results, I think there is one clear winner, especially for gaming. So let's get into those results right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So I'll pull up today's test system specifications for you guys, where we can see here that we've used as many of the same variables as possible, with the only differences being the motherboard and the CPU with Intel versus AMD. We've used the same 7600 MHz, which was stable on all three CPUs and motherboards, and we've used the same 420mm all-in-one liquid cooler, as well as the same SSD and power supply. Though for today's results in relation to the 7950X in particular, that also saw a big drop in power consumption when we tuned that. But for the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, undervolted versus no undervolt, this thing was virtually the same. In fact, I was really impressed with how the 7800X3D performs out of the box. But more on that later, let's get in to these results here, starting with 1080p low settings, which is what a lot of pros use, especially in a game like this. We saw the FPS advantage being in favor of the 7800X3D. However, that being said, what I'm seeing here is ridiculous amounts of FPS. I personally wouldn't be complaining using any of these three CPUs for this game, but also something that's important to mention with Counter-Strike 2 is these FPS rates are far above the server tick rate. And that's why once we get over a certain limit with FPS, we're really getting diminishing returns. But let's move on to the next title here, which is atomic heart and what we've got here is essentially this uh, hallway that i run down and in this case the fps cap is at 500 but we come into a little bit of an issue here where if the game i didn't even know this but if the game hits 500 fps your character can't move properly anymore it actually uh, jams the engine up quite significantly so in this footage that you're seeing here even though it, I'm trying to get a fair comparison. It was just really hard to do this when some of the CPUs are constantly hitting the 500 FPS cap. But what we saw in this game was similar to the two previous comparisons here where the 7800X3D is doing the best job overall for the power it's using up, even versus these other two CPUs, which take time to tune. And this is going to lead into our final example here, Horizon Zero Dawn. Again, 1080p low settings, just like the other three titles. However, this game does take advantage of a lot of cores and a lot of threads, more so than the other three titles we've tested here. And so what we can see here is both the 4900K and the 7950X, their clock speeds actually drop a little bit. And then the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, that's just chumming along and getting really good FPS, especially for that power consumption. And what we're seeing here, the end result, we'll actually pull up a graph for this final comparison. The 7800X3D does really well, especially considering if you undervolt it, you're not gonna get much out of it. It's a CPU that's essentially in many ways, very hard to tune. You just can't get a whole lot out of it. AMD's locked the 7800X3D to pretty much just perform at one state as soon as you get it. However, that being said, that state that you get it in is phenomenal as we're seeing in today's comparison and the results that I'm presenting here. So what we've got here is in my opinion, a clear winner 
from this comparison, and that is the Ryzen 7 7800X3D for gaming. And that is, you've got the power consumption already being really good out of the box. You've also got the lower price point of this CPU compared to the other two CPUs. And then you've finally, on top of all that, you've got power consumption numbers that make sense. And this is where it's gonna throw in a little bit of a twist in today's video, where what we saw in these results here, the 14900K with the Ryzen Zero Dawn, when that power limit is just completely unlocked, this is including the GPU power consumption, by the way, for this testing, we can see here that it just goes off the rails. And this is in a lot of cases, what high-end motherboards will have with the 14900K. In this case, we're using the Z790 Nova from ASRock, but I know this is the same for the high-end ASUS motherboards, MSI and Gigabyte motherboards. Whereas opposed to uh, the, say, the mid-range Z790s, they will actually implement a 252 watt limit on the CPU. And I've shown these results in this Horizon Zero Dawn graph for you guys, and you can see that it just does use a lot more power, especially versus the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. But more on that, we've got the next graph that we're gonna show here, and this is with the 7950X versus the i9-14900K in particular because when we go to Cinebench, we can see the results here both out of the box and when it's tuned down to 90 watts. And I do put quotations here because the 90 watts on the Ryzen 7950X was working properly, but then we move over to the Intel CPU, it was using a lot more for this 90 watts. And I couldn't explain what was happening here except for the fact that I believe there's just more power consumption being used in the process. Even though they got similar numbers, the from the wall figures with the 7950X and Cinebench was significantly lower and for similar performance, which makes me think that something's going on, especially when I compare this to the numbers that we were seeing in Horizon Zero Dawn. The uh, 14900K was just using a bit more power in general as to what was being presented on my screen in terms of software numbers from what I'm measuring from the wall. And the funny thing about Horizon Zero Dawn was the 7800X3D was technically taxing the GPU more because it was getting higher FPS, making it an even bigger win for that CPU in that particular game. So there was definitely something weird about the numbers both for Cinebench and gaming with the 14900K, especially versus the Ryzen CPU and the counterparts there where we saw higher power consumption from the wall than what was being presented in the software, essentially with the readouts. So I've seen this before with GPUs in the past, but now it seems like it's making its way onto the 14th gen platform where the wattage numbers are in ways misleading, at least from what I'm seeing here at my studio and doing the testing. And so that was a little bit concerning to see where you think you're getting certain wattage numbers, but it's actually using up more. And over time, especially if it's to the tune of a hundred watt difference, over time that will actually cost you money, especially if you're at your PC and you're gaming for quite some hours every day or every week. So there's actually a big difference between these three CPUs. And that comes down to not just performance, but also power consumption. Though with that aside, it's now time for a conclusion with these three CPUs for gaming and tuning and undervolting. And what I'm seeing here is, as we talked about before, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. If you're after high-end gaming performance, it is the only way to go. It's cheaper than the 14900K and the 7950X, and it does a better job not just out of the box, but also even when you tune the other two CPUs. And this is a really important point to drive home. And so this is a CPU where you can simply get any motherboard. And also in the past, I'll put the link up here, I've tested the 7800X3D with a budget A620 and found that it's given phenomenal results on that too. And so you can couple it with a cheap motherboard, lock in XMP profiles, and then just call it a day and not have to worry about leaving a whole lot on the table, especially if you're paying for power out of your own pocket and those power prices are high where you are, this over time will actually save you for high-end gaming some money on your power bill. And so that was something that was impressive to see from this CPU. It is the current 
CPU to get on the high end. Though in terms of the Ryzen 9 7950X and also the i9-14900K, they have their purposes. We'll be checking that out in an upcoming review. So if you want to see that the moment it drops, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. Though the final thing to talk about in today's video with the i9-14900K is the out-of-the-box tuning for gaming. I think it is just absolutely ridiculous to see these level of power consumption and this level of heat from a CPU with its default settings. And what we saw with Horizon Zero Dawn is power consumption that is going sky high. And this is going to happen, unfortunately, on the same power limits. You're going to get really high power consumption and it's just going to be poorly tuned out of the box. So this would be a good thing maybe if you wanted to heat your home up in the winter, which is here for the Northern Hemisphere. And so just like there is more efficient ways to game right now, there's of course much more efficient ways to heat your home. So the 14900K, it's not really doing anything for me when it comes to gaming. And so I'm really disappointed to see that Intel with this release, especially just for gaming, has decided to go just completely off the rails with the power consumption and it's so bad to the point that it makes AMD with their 7950X and the 230 watts and 95 degree limit, it, that makes that look like a blessing. So I just don't know what is going on with these flagship CPUs anymore. Whatever happened to releasing a CPU at normal power consumption levels, normal heat, normal temperature, and then letting the enthusiasts who wanted to get all that extra performance experiment and do all that. And then letting the normal folk have a really good experience and not have to worry about high power bills. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.